Oh, this looks sweet. Oh, yeah. So you want to get up there closer. Yeah. Closer. Okay. Closer. Yeah. Okay. Come over here to the right. Five steps. I'm losing it. Losing it. Okay, so right off the bat, did not launch when I thought I was going to. I was moving up, I got a little bit of a gust, and it just picked me right up. Did not want to have a turtle repeat of last time, so I just went for it. You can see me pulling a little bit right as I get going there, and we're off to the races. So, right off the bat, yes, my angle of hang is off. This harness I can't adjust quite the way I want. It's just a rental. Hopefully soon I'll have a better fitting harness. Second, big thing, especially for this flight, the harness is not adjusted correctly. My leg loop length is not right. It's too short. Someone else had used this harness before me and I didn't realize that they had used it. So when I was doing my hang check there, I was like, oh, it's just tangled up. That's why it feels a little bit short. It's fine. I straightened it out before launch. In my head, I'm like, okay, I'm good. It was just tangled when I was doing the hang check. In hindsight, I should have made sure during the hang check that it was the proper length because I would have figured out that it was too short. And also, knowing what I know now, I can see here, there's a place I could have adjusted it in flight, but I didn't realize that because I didn't know the harness well enough. And so definitely major point, know your gear, do a hang check. And when you're doing the hang check, if something feels off, make sure it's right. Get it right. Get it dialed right. in before launching. <laughs> Unintentional launch. This glider's harness is adjusted like crap. But uh, we're surviving. Yeah, so super stressful launch. A lot of things are racing through my mind. I'm super locked in now. It's a new launch site. So launching here from EJ, instead of Eliminator, the normal launch site, the plan is to land at Parma, lower Parma, but as we'll see later, that doesn't exactly happen. So I'm cruising out here. This is a beautiful view on the way out. And so we see on my left there from this wingtip angle that I'm flying back next to some really cool rock formations. Super cool to check out a new spot, really excited. So something that I'm adding in on this flight is I finally figured out how to get Google Earth working. And so we're looking at Google Earth view of my track. Those dotted lines are actually where I flew the GPS data. And so I just wanted to show for quick reference here, like an absolute altitude above the ground, because I think that's the most important metric in a lot of this. Holy crap. Okay. I survived. The harness is really misadjusted right now. Not liking that. I'm sitting very awkwardly. Like super awkwardly. And yeah, so we can see me fidgeting there with the harness. It's not very comfortable. My legs are bent, terrible for aerodynamic performance. And that definitely did not help me in this flight at all. And so coming up here, this is what is called the tunnel tit. It's that giant point kind of out there on the on that ridge. There it's not working, beautiful. And that is what I'm supposed to be flying over. That's where you can get usually a really good thermal activity going. But as we'll see from a cutaway here in the Google Earth really quick here, I don't think I had the safe altitude to make it in flight. And I'm really glad I didn't because looking at it in the analysis okay. afterwards, yeah. I definitely did not. So this first point here, if I had flown directly over it, I would have been at just 71 feet over it. And then the bigger, more concerning thing is if I extrapolate out my distance past the first point over to that next point farther down, assuming I didn't get any lift, I would be just 50 feet above it. That is extremely low on the hang glider, especially in an area where I'm far away from a road. If I make a safe landing, it's gonna be a terrible retrieve as well as new place I've never been here. I don't want to risk it. And so I made the decision to just continue on going down, not staying on top of a ridge, which isn't great for lift, but didn't want to put myself in a situation where I might be scraping into the ground this far deep into the mountains. When I knew that if I just kept on this current path, I could make it to the alternative landing zone, St. Mary's. And that's where I ended up eventually landing, as we'll see in about five minutes here.
All right, I'm feeling good about clean power lines in that ridge now, which I like. And so circled there, that's that point that would have been just 50 feet over if I decided to go down that path, which I'm very glad I didn't. Looking ridiculous. Oh, legs. Ah, <laughs> well, f me. And so passing over here, we see some power lines. Um, this is the same power lines that if I launched from a limiter that I would pass over, just obviously farther to the right from the glider's perspective on the power line track itself. And so I was having a conversation with the buddy after this flight of why are the most dangerous flights the most exciting? Because there's something about, I think the biggest thing for me is flying this close to the grounds. It feels just so much faster because you're so much closer to that terrain. You really get a sense of your speed and it's just beautiful being next to these objects moving so fast. Palms are definitely sweaty at this point. I mean, I have multiple ridges to pass here. I'm, I'm looking at a landing zone that I've walked one time before. I know it's a good alternative landing zone. The biggest thing to keep in mind when I'm approaching the landing zone is watching out for these other power lines that are right in the approach for it. And so yeah, passing over that terrain right there, again, I am pretty low. I'm not in like a dangerous position. I think looking at Google Earth, I'm like 300 feet plus over the ground there, which is solid. But again, I'm supposed to be on top of or to the left of that ridge. And so to make it on top of that ridge, I needed a lot more elevation. I got a terrible, terrible glide ratio right now. I'm not helping myself with those bent legs, my position due to this rental harness, a lot of factors adding up to make this one, not ideal conditions, even if I didn't have like an unsurprising launch, but I did have that surprising launch. So at this point, I'm looking out, I see the notch over there. I'm like, okay, do I go for that? It looks pretty dicey. I decide not to. I'm locked into landing at St. Mary's now. Not a commonly used landing zone again, but have walked it before with the instructor. Very glad that I did that before this. And always good to know where your good, safe bailouts are. And so I start lining that up now. I have a little bit of altitude actually, as we can see, to, to get to that landing zone. like. I don't have to just beeline straight for it. Like maybe I could try a turn or two if I see something that looks promising as far as getting some lift. Again, love hearing those birds chirp in the background. That's just awesome. And so here, I'm starting to work around a little bit. I'm like, hey, maybe there's a little bit of lift here. I'll try a little bit of a turn, see what I can get. Even more promising uh, from my, just my own gut is I see a crow getting in the thermal and I'm like, okay, he's actually physically getting lift in this position right here. And so if I can position myself correctly, I can get that same lift guaranteed because I see somebody else in the air getting that lift. The problem is I'm a little bit bigger and heavier than a crow and I got to get to my landing zone pretty quick. And so I didn't get super good lift. Um, we can see I maintain a little bit, you know, I'm getting, I'm definitely getting some lift, but this isn't like a thermal just like shooting me up, skyrocketing me to the moon or anything like that. And so I'm maintaining altitude, but that's not enough where I can comfortably get to like a good altitude. And again, maybe I could have gone for the notch, but I don't want to put myself in a position where I couldn't even get to my backup landing zone. <sighs> can hear a little bit it's kind of hard to hear but my breathing really starts to get heavy here and this is because I'm extremely focused I'm holding my breath I'm getting stressed out this is pretty high intensity mentally for me just because I'm landing on a new spot my legs are uncomfortable there's so many new factors I'm worried about hitting these power lines and 
To make matters even more interesting, looking at my approach and how to avoid the power lines, I'm starting to realize at this point that I'm probably gonna have to land in a bush or a tree, not an open area, which is something I've basically never done before. And so, drop the legs down, I'm coming in for the bush, I see where I'm gonna end up. I know that I just gotta do a really good strong flare, stop that forward speed, and I'll be good no matter where I land. And so pull in, round out, big flare, boom, I'm in the bush. Okay, I live. Honestly, a very smooth landing. I was pretty happy with that. Okay. If anyone's on, I'm um, good. Landed in a bush. Good landing. I'm so relieved. I'm, I'm not injured. The glider looks okay. I made it out alive. It was honestly a pretty fun flight. Now I just got to figure out how the heck I'm getting this glider out of here. I figured it'd be interesting to show me actually clearing the brush just because this is something that I've heard about happening to other pilots, but never really like seen. I mean, I've envisioned the horrors of having to do this. But um, yeah, here's the video of me actually clearing out all the brush, digging this glider out of here. Hey, so I'm uh, over here hanging out at uh, St. Mary's right now. I just uh, landed in a bush. <laughs> you, you all good? Yep, I'm good. Uh, glider's good as far as I can tell. I mean, it's on, on a slightly tall bush. It's like maybe like five feet tall, but I'm standing on the ground and the wheels are on the ground, so. Could be a little bit of a project to get it out, but... Well, well glad we checked out that landing field then. Um, yes, I was thinking too. <laughs> um, Alright, well, um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll come get you when uh, Ryan uh, comes to land. Okay, sounds uh, good. Yeah, I'll just uh, <laughs> start working out this. Yeah, and I just like never got to a point where I could even aim for Parma, unfortunately. Mm, yeah, it looks like you got really, I don't know, I, could, I guess it's kind of hard to tell from the perspective, um, were you kind of going around, having to go around all the terrain features? Or? Yeah, yeah, I just did, was not feeling comfortable trying to go above anything. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you kind of can get above something, you end up starting to get rich instead of all the things, so. Yep. So if you're behind them all the whole time, you end up getting trashed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I just didn't see an opportunity to make it happen. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, well, glad you're right. Yep, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll come pick you up. Um, yeah, probably when Brian lands. Any okay. tips for a uh, glider <laughs> bush removal? So I'm assuming, like, take out battens and stuff or don't want to try and leave them in or so I kind of got this bigger bush right in the back I think it's going to be the, the main issue but I think if I fold it towards this right wing I might be able to do something there I still want to damage it in the process obviously so I kind of think about Pull the battens out if you can. That might help. Okay. Um, and then uh, um, we can we can help you out if you can't figure it out. So. Okay. Yeah, I'll start with the battens then and see what I'm comfortable doing yeah, without. Yeah. Try the battens and maybe maybe see if you can move it at that point without. Uh, yeah. You could kind of push up from the base too, maybe to help free it up or something. I don't know. Okay. Sounds good. We'll, uh, if you can't figure it out, we'll come help you. Sounds good. All right. Cool. <laughs> okay. See you in a bit. You, you get your. Uh, book Get your bush pilot rating now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, cool. Talk to you later. Okay. Well, pretty wild to think how we ended up here. But uh, here we are. <laughs> Not too shabby. Let's go. That's a bush land, boys. So I just wanted to capture some thoughts. We'll have a little bit of time here waiting for the crew to come bail me out. So as we can see on launch, um, didn't launch when I thought I was going to. Uh, just had a really strong cycle. I was literally getting picked like vertically up 
and was like, yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna go for it. We're about to launch anyway, so don't see a huge reason to wait here. Might as well go for it. I think uh, that was a good decision. Uh, put me a little bit on the edge of my seat. Um, not a comfortable position to be in, but turned out okay. Um, biggest thing is immediately when I try to step into the stirrup, I'm like, crap, it's too short. Um, someone else has used the harness and adjusted it, and I didn't catch it in my hand check. I, I, I know it to self, future hang checks, <clears throat> always kick into the stirrup, see the length. But I just done a really quick one there. I thought it was tangled up. I actually felt it was a little bit short, but it was like, oh, it's tangled up. I'll straighten it out when I stand up, which I did. And I'm like, okay, it'll be fine. It's always been fine. And I'm also knowing how to adjust it because looking at it now on the ground, there's a little clip that I could have easily adjusted it with, but I wasn't sure in the air. And as we saw on the flight, pretty dicey for a lot of it. So new launch site at EJ there. Um, we were down at Eliminator, decided to go back up to EJ because we saw Willie launch, didn't get a lot. He's like, hey, watch out for the wind, great tip. Uh, that's eventually why I ended up down here at this lovely place, St. Mary's. <laughs> um, yeah, so came out, <coughs> could not get over the ridge. Um, first time coming over there, you know, don't really know what I'm doing exactly as far as, you know, how close to shoot for. <coughs> a lot of pollen, sorry. Maybe could have shot through to the notch. Ah, dicey. I don't think, I think I made the right call here. And yeah, tried like two little spins right out there. I saw Crow getting some lift and I was like, yeah, I'm too high for Parma, or um, too high for St. Mary's right now anyway. Might as well try, maybe, maybe I can pop up. Didn't happen, all good. And honestly, one of the smoothest landings I've had, like landing in a bush, landing in a bush is nice. Disassembling from a bush, not nice, but landing in a bush, nice and soft. Um, <coughs> from what I can tell, the glider is good. So far, I haven't gotten it out yet, so we'll see. But um, <coughs> but yeah, coming in for this landing, terrifying, thinking about the power lines the whole time. Um, that's why I ended up higher on this hill than lower. I still stand by that decision just because I'd much rather dig out of a bush or even damage the glider than land it in a power line uh, for the glider in my sake, mostly my sake though. And uh, yeah, we're here now. Um, kind of in a way glad to finally get this experience under my belt so I'm not intimidated by it in the future because honestly the approach and everything wasn't bad at all and uh yeah as Willie said on the phone call I'm bush pilot rated now so that's pretty cool um <laughs> yeah and of course getting the car up was an issue we had to drive all the way around and I gotta drive around again but you know it's life this is a great experience day and I'd like to share with you guys <laughs>